praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Scripture says that His presence is the fullness of joy. At His right hand, there are eternal pleasures. Today is the very last day in the month of May. It's been an exciting time for the past two months as we run through teachings that will guide believers to cope with the times that we are in, understanding God's calendar. Today we want to look at something very critical. You know, we all live and sometimes we begin to wonder, will I be, will I be ever known? Will somebody hear of me? When will I experience breakthrough? That's what we call it. Will I ever have it? These are everyday questions that bothers both the great and the small. Those who fear, I say the great, those who, who already sense the greatness in them. And then they are wondering, when will my time come? Today, the sermon is designed to address that question. If you are a child of God this morning, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus and you are born again, I want you to know that you have your date. You have your own date. Pending on two things that I'm going to introduce us to today. There are two Greek words that we're going to use today. After today, you become familiar with them. Want to look at how to recognize your season. How to recognize your season. How to recognize your season. You will get to understand this morning that our season is divided into two. There is the grooming and there is the glowing. It's not as if when you start glowing, the grooming stops. But there is that period where you are groomed first and you are unknown. Then, from being unknown, you become visible. Yet, your being visible is not your announcement. They're two different things. That a person is becoming visible does not mean that you have gotten your divine announcement to your world. Many times we miss that. And I'm going to give you the illustration straight away, something that can help us understand the difference. For example, if you vie for a public office, an election is conducted and you win, does it automatically make you start functioning as that public office holder? No. You need to wait for your inauguration. Once you are inaugurated, that is when you have been announced officially. So you see, the first phase of your season is your winning an election. After winning the election, a minimum of one month, you will go back like nothing happened. Jesus had that experience too. Jesus was 12 years when the first part of the season happened to him. He showed up, interacted with PhD holders, doctors of the law, in theology. And thereafter, he disappeared again from the scene. That was not his announcement. That was his visibility. There are two Greek words. The first one is epiphaino. That's the first Greek word that you get to understand today. Epiphaino. That's the first Greek word. The, the second one is anagdexis. Anagdexis. So we have epiphaino and anagdexis. And funny enough, both words happen in the same scriptures, the same passage that I'm going to show to you. 
after today, if you are a child of God, a believer in Christ Jesus, you will never be worried as per when will my time come. Because you just know that if you are born again and you are in Christ Jesus and you are in the path, P-A-T-H, the path of your purpose, you have a date with God. Those who will never get announcement are the ones who never discover their purpose in God, in Christ Jesus. Those who never found their way to the path that God has designed for them. And aside from that, I'm just giving a summary of where we are going to. Then we'll start picking it one by one. I don't know why I choose to go this way this morning. But I'm giving a summary before I start the sermon. Also, don't get confused. Our announcements are not all the same. Some announcement will be done on the global stage. Others, it is in community stage. Some in local government, your county, your state. Some, it is just in their country. Others, is continent, their continent. Now, don't by any means be confused with the fact that the one that was announced on the global stage is more important than the one whose announcement ended at the community. Don't get confused. Because when Jesus gave us that insight, he said, God distributed to every one of them. It was God who gave them. So he wouldn't have expected from them what he never gave them. And he's not going to judge them based on what he gave the other person. You remember the parable of the talent? He gave one five, he gave one uh, two, then he gave another one one. The master was not going to judge the one he gave two with the one he gave five. No. Same way he wasn't going to judge the one he gave one as the one he gave two. He wasn't expecting the one he gave one to come and give him three. Just reproduce your kind. That's why even the five didn't produce 15. The message there is you only reproduce your kind. You can only give what you have. So that would be the basis. Because if we don't understand, you see this message is so peculiar. When I was discussing with the Holy Spirit yesterday and then he was opening my eyes today, I was like, wow. Because you see, sometimes, why do we find infightings in churches? It's because we don't have this understanding. So you think because that soloist in the choir, let's begin it from the church choir. That soloist in the choir, he's the one that, that is holding mic. He's the one everybody sees. And people know his name. How many choir members' name do church members know? Very few. But you cannot afford not to know the soloist, the lead chorus. Now, in the eyes of God, the lead chorus is no more important than that woman, that advanced woman that is singing soprano. Or tenor or treble that has never handled the mic to solo. As long as she's doing what she's called to do, the guy who is the soloist is not going to get a bigger reward than her. As a matter of fact, if the one who is the soloist turns from ministering to showmanship, becomes an entertainer. That silent woman that people don't know her name will get more reward than he, than he will get. That's if he's going to get any. So it is, it is not a black and white thing. Today's message is to encourage us that after all those process, those process of understanding the time, going through the period of the Antichrist, going through the 1,000 years reign with Christ and the moving into the new heaven and, and the new earth, the kindness heaven and the kindness earth. There will be that time where we will be rewarded based on our works here on earth. But if you are a child of God, if you are born again, you have your date of announcement. First of all, the day he makes you visible, then announces you. That's why I give an example of Jesus. I use Jesus as an example, and I'll come back to it. 
at the age of 12, he was already visible. Then, as if he was pulled back from the scene. It's not because he did something wrong. We need to understand God's system. We must understand how the kingdom of God works. Suddenly, he was pulled out. We never heard of him again until he was 30. Look at it, 12 plus 18 years before we heard of him again. So he, he had his epiphano at the age of 12. But his anadexis appeared when he was 30. Once you hit that anadexis, there's no going back. Nothing swallows you again. As long as you remain on the path. But how do I get to this? So many times, instead of us looking at the signs that I'll be showing us today, instead of us looking at divine signs, we are looking at time. We are counting the clock. We are numbering our days. Time has gone far. Time has gone far. When will it happen? When will it happen? Now look at Moses. Let's look at Moses. Let's look at another example. Do We've not read the scriptures, so we're going to read them. Let's look at Moses. This is how the Spirit just wants us to flow today. Let's look at Moses. At the age of 40, Moses had experienced his epiphano already. At the age of 40, he had experienced his epiphano. His visibility was known to Israel already. But when did he get his anadexis? 40 years after. 40 years later. So you see, that you got your epiphano doesn't mean your anadexis will appear the next moment. It might. But it might appear, as, as we have seen in the case of Jesus, 18 years later. In the case of Moses, 40 years later. In the case of Caleb, Caleb, it was also 40 years later. 45 years he was when he was made visible as they were sent to spy. He was already 85 when his announcement became very known. So let's... That's why the Bible said in the book of Psalm, it didn't say, let me count my days. He said, teach us to number our days. There's a lot of spiritual implication in that statement. But we don't know. That means you cannot account for your days apart from God. You will never be able to number it right without Him, outside of Him. Now, if it was easy to just number your days, do you need Him? No, you just to say, oh, today I'm 15. Oh, oh, the next year I'm 16, right? So you are, but He said, teach us. Oh God, we need to understand the language of God, please. You cannot be in the kingdom and not know what is happening or how the kingdom is governed. The kingdom of God where we operate is his kingdom whose system is truth. But that truth is embedded in mysteries. That is where you need to walk with the Holy Spirit. Personally, or through ministers of the gospel, like us. And please, disabuse from your mind that the only ones that get announcement, Epiphano and Anagdexis, are ministers of the gospel. I'm going to show you from the scripture today, virtually all kinds of persons who had their announcement. So you don't need to go mind and be a preacher. They are not, they don't have the monopoly of Epiphano and Anadexis. I will show you a profession that someone engaged in that announced her. Shockingly. Announced her. Glory to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 60. Oh, what a way to start. You summarize, then you start. Hmm. How to recognize your season. In that season, there are two words that we need to look at. Two Greek words, like I've called already. Epiphino. 
That is the day God makes you visible. The day he makes you visible. Then Anaxes. Anaxes is a pointing out. A public showing forth. A proclaiming. Announcing. Inaugurating of such as are elected to office. Did you see that? So there is a clear difference between Epiphano and Anaxes. There is a clear difference between God making you visible and then he showing you forth as we will see from the scripture. Now look at it. So it's not everything that is devil, people of God. It's, we have attributed so much power, so much credit to Satan that he doesn't deserve and he doesn't have. Wait, people of God, what is the first thing that strikes you from the statement from the sermon so far? So all the story of somebody is using black cloth to cover your destiny. Compare it with what we have said now. And you say that not all of them are true. Not all of them are true. Otherwise, we will say also to Jesus that the devil, when he wanted to show up, the devil covered his blanket at the age of 12. So he had to fast and pray and battle until he was 30 before he showed up again. So, so let's be careful the doctrines we parade, we market in the church. There is so much ignorance. Yeah, so much ignorance in the church. The credit we have given to the devil he too will be wondering if these people are actually children of God. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 60. I have told you the end. Your focus should be, how do I get to the end? Do you understand? Have you observed that when God wants to reveal himself to you, he shows you the end where you are going to? Because the end is not your making. The beginning is yours. So when you are not smart, you are carried away by, wow, you said you are going to be great. That's the end. Enter the pathway to greatness. So, I went and admonish us, we have seen the end. You're going to experience Epiphano, and you're going to experience Anadexis. No two ways about it. As long as what? That is what you want to look at now. So it is the as long as that you should be focusing on. Leave the epiphano, leave the anagesis to him. After all, you are not the one responsible for that. He's the one to make you visible. He's the one that is going to show you forth. But you know, we will live where we are to focus on, on the how-to, and then we are carried away by the epiphano and the anagesis. This morning we are speaking Greek. Praise God. Hallelujah. Epiphano, anagesis. In Rabbi Grace Ecclesia, we increase our vocabulary. In the kingdom of God. Understanding how to walk with him. Isaiah 60. Arise shine. For the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now look at it. We are excited with the arise. And shine. And we skip. What is. Next. And jump to the last one. Arise, shine, because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's not the most important statement there. You know the most important statement? For light, you have gotten light. You can't arise until there is light. Because in that light is the glory of God. Praise God. The glory of God that we reason, that we be risen, the Bible didn't say will come upon you. It's risen upon you. It's like it's emanating from within you. That glory is in the light. That glory is in the light. What is the light? That light is what I'm going to show you in the New Testament. That is called Fortizo. It's revelation. It is you being lifted to your path. Your destiny and purpose. The pathway. The moment you hit it. And you begin to fellowship with God. 
and begin to get light. Now you see, for a minister, his light purely is a revelation of Jesus, the gospel, right? But what about an artisan? What is his light? The way God opens his mind, her mind, about that artisanship, about that business, about that entrepreneurial work, that is his light. The moment he begins to show dexterity, Mm? The, the, the moment he or she begins to show creativity in Israel, in Israel at work, the glory of God is hidden inside that light. And that glory is going to unveil itself. Once the glory unveils itself, the guy that has been there that people didn't notice become visible. Have you ever done something for somebody? And, like, ah, ah, and I didn't know you can do this thing. And I've been seeing you. That was your epiphany. But you see, if you don't get light, you cannot arise. The arising is not you who says, let me arise. Please, let me break it down to all. This is spiritual calculation, spiritual physics. It, 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 that's why you didn't hear, oh, now arise. Mm -mm. Arise, shine. For the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Your day just broke. You are experiencing daybreak. Your light has come. Light makes everything visible. Light makes everything clear. Light speaks of understanding. It speaks of revelation. It speaks of illumination. It speaks of insight. So for the artisan guy, the moment he studies, the more he studies God's word, he begins to operate in a realm of wisdom that certain things that he's supposed to do this way, he finds himself doing it another way and getting a better result. So this is not for, I'm not centering, I'm not focusing on ministers of the gospel. Because it seems to be that, that's why everybody now wants to be pastor. Everybody wants to be a minister of the gospel because they think that Epiphano and Anadexis is only for them. They are the only one God makes visible and they are the only one God announces, inaugurates. It's wrong, it's not true. Everyone in the kingdom of God that has subjected himself or herself to the schooling, the tutelage of the Holy Spirit, you have your date of visibility and you have your date of inauguration. Arise, shine. How to recognize your season. Your season starts when you start noticing light. Don't forget your season has two parts. Like I said, while I was summarizing before I started, what a strange way to, to preach. We summarized before we started. Your season has two parts. There's the grooming and there's the glowing. There's the epiphanal and there's the anadexis. Until you get to the first G, grooming, you cannot experience the glowing. Because the glowing is, Im is embedded in the grooming. Verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon thee. How? He already dropped the key in verse 1. Your light has come. Once your light come, you shine forth. Anyone who bases his standing out by their looks, they don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. Your looks is not your what. Your mental and spiritual capacity is your what. John the, John the Baptist wasn't beautifully dressed. But he was that man that the king listened to. Praise God this morning. He was the man the king listened to. And the Bible said, and Herod listened to him diligently. He wasn't well dressed. In fact, his dressing looked like a madman. Looked like that of a madman. But the king listened to him. Yet you had people who were far better dressed than him. They couldn't even go near the king. Now, what am I trying to say? Your epiphano and anagdexis, nothing stops it. John the Baptist was in the class of the king, the ruler. 
So it is not by how you dress. It's not by how you talk. It's not your phonetics. If it has to do with presentation, John would never get close. John the Baptist would never have gotten close to the king. Are you getting what I'm saying? He would never have gotten near Herod. A man that was taking uh, honey and eating white locusts. That looks like a very scary picture to me. But the king listened to him. And you ask yourself, where did the king find John the Baptist? The Bible said he was in the wilderness. And the city was converted to him. So do the mathematics. So either the king deliberately passes by where John is so he can hear him. Or John moves close to the palace and the king has instructed the soldiers, nobody harasses him. And you get what I'm saying? So when it's your epiphany, so you, you see these days, let me pause here and say something about the ministry, the kind of ministers that we are having now. They think ministry is their dressing. Anointing is not echo. Echo is not anointing. Ministerial greatness has nothing to do with the suit you put on. Open your mouth and let us know what you carry. You are putting on fancy suit and then you are putting on fancy wristwatch and you are empty inside. That's not how to identify greatness. Bible said in the book of Luke and Jesus was in a place ministry and the power of God was present to heal. When you speak, what happens? Shouting is not anointing. Echo is not anointing. Jumping from one part of the pulpit to the other. It's not anointing. So also the size of your church. It's not anointing. The size of the building has nothing to do with your anointing. That's not what determines greatness. If that is what determines greatness, then this political... These are politicians, then they are too great. Because they can pack a crowd of, uh, of 500,000. And plus the money they share to them. And you get what I'm saying? So let's, let's begin to look at things from the perspective of God. So we don't get confused. Don't get mix it up. So they have to do everything to go and get designer's shoe. Get designer's wristwatch. And dress looking slick. And they say, what a great man of God. He opens his mouth and it's like somebody that is... That is fatting. Come on. Jesus is Lord. Of Lord. King of kings. It was difficult to even identify him. When they came to arrest him. Think about that. It was difficult to identify him when they came to arrest him. Why was that? Why was that? I leave that to you to ponder. Let's, let's stop majoring on the minor and minoring on the major. You should major on the major and minor on the minor. Praise God. He said, For behold the darkness and cross darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord shall be seen, it shall be risen upon you. This is what happens. The only time, the only way people can know what you carry is when you solve their problems. That's always the case. If the sick had come to Jesus and none was healed, nobody would have known his, his greatness. So problem solving, problems, they are a gift from God to unveiling your greatness perspective somebody sees a problem say, oh god i'm dead and that one sees it say, oh god this is my opportunity goliath stood before other israelites as he stood before david the israelites saw death and mockery and humiliation david saw an opportunity also look at david his epiphano. Look at his epiphano. When he slaughtered lion. When he slaughtered a bear. That was his visibility. Yet he was not announced yet.
When they pour oil on him, he went back. That was his epiphanyo too. He went back to the bush and remained there. Then Goliath showed up. After slaughtering Goliath, he was still there. His anagdexis only took place after Saul had died. Almost 20 years difference. Just like Jesus. Moses was 40. So let's quit doing this human calculation. Because what it will breed, it will breed frustration and despondency in us. Let's begin to see things the way God sees it. And it's going to keep us fit and strong. Bible says we know all things work together for good. So the believer in Christ Jesus is not designed to be disadvantaged. To be at a disadvantage. I cannot be at a disadvantage. It's not part of my system. It's not part of my nature. And I won't experience it. Praise God this morning. Verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come. And the Gentiles shall come. Did you see that? And the Gentiles shall come to what? To the light, not your face. <laughs> God will never make an ignorant person visible. In your feet, in your workplace, in your job, in the ministry. You are praying, oh God, announce me to my word. And he says, who? Who? I should announce your ignorance. You don't even know John 3, 16. As a minister. Then I should announce you. So that you will bring shame to me. Not me, my son. You are not ready. Hide him. Praise God. In your place of work, in your feed, your job, your trade, your skill. Don't pray for God to announce you. He knows he owes you that. Tell him to groom you. Tell him to give you light. Because that light, your announcement is in the light he gives you. You only arise when the light comes. You can never be the light until you have received light. Praise God. Didn't Jesus say we are the light of the world? Didn't you see of all things he called you light? Understanding, illumination, that's what you are. So we cannot be dishing out ignorance. And thinking God is announcing us. The worst thing, the, the greatest thing that can happen to you is to force yourself to be out there. Prematurely. When you crash... It will look like you didn't exist. You never came. Praise God. Amen. Have you seen somebody come and, and went? And it was like he never came. Yet, you see somebody came and left. It's like he never left. Praise God. At Bishop Benson in house, Apostle Paul, Apostle John, Apostle Peter. They came and left. But it's like they never left. Praise God. Amen. Smith Wigglesworth, they came and left. It's like they never left. E.W. Kayon, Kenneth e. Hagen. These men have come and gone, but it's like they, they have not. Whereas there are those who came and left, and it's like they never came. I'm using very strong spiritual proverbs this morning. Don't force yourself. And don't fall into the trap of Hezekiah. Who forced himself and he ruined his, lit his own legacy because he thought God wasn't smart enough. Set your house in order. Time to go. No. All right, see. Give him how many more years? 10 or 15 more years. And Manasseh showed up and became one of the worst kings in Israel. Towards his day and after he had done so much damage, he now repented. But the Bible was always making reference to menacing. Praise God. Amen. Why would he have stained his legacy? Because he didn't understand. Don't argue with him. You can commune with him. Don't argue with him. Praise God. Amen. It is not a wise thing to be arguing with God. It's not a wise thing. So he said, and the Gentiles shall come to what? To thy light. And kings, look at it, kings, kings speaks of, in our present day, rulership, political power, democratic, monarchical power, those in authority politically. He said, shall come to what? To the brightness of thy rising. 
See the point. They are not coming to you. It is the brightness in you that is attracting them. The knowledge. The grace of God. The knowledge you carry. Spiritual or physical. Or mechanical. You know what I mean? In terms of your skill. That's what we attract them. Are you getting the code already? Leave Epiphano and Anadexis. That is God's responsibility. And he knows what to do. But he already advised us in Psalm. Allow me number your days. Oh. If you walk with me and I teach you how to number it. We will get to your Epiphan Epiphano and Anadexis. You can walk through this earth with God. And not experience Epiphano and Anadexis. It is impossible. It is impossible. You would definitely experience it. I guarantee you that. And Gentiles shall come to the light. And kings to the brightness of the rising. Lift up their eyes round about. And see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar. And thy daughters shall be nursed at the side. Now look at the point of verse 4. Lift up thy eyes round about thee and see. So you see, until you receive light, you won't see changes in your life. Now you see, there are times you, some tremendous things, some men of God, do you know, some of they have preached for a while. That the truth somewhere, one year pass, two years pass, somebody will stumble into it and play it where another person is and say, who, who is this person? It's okay, do we have contact? They look for it. And that's the beginning of your Anax de Dexis. Straight up. But that thing, you dropped it two, three years back. Or you had a conversation with somebody about a project the person wa wanted you to do for, for the person. And the person disappeared. And you too found your way. But, but you already showed the person sample of what you can do. When these people go, it's not devil. Don't always, let us keep, stop attributing these nonsense things to the devil. What business do we have with him when the Bible says we have been translated? Don't forget our transpose we did the other time. You've been relocated completely. From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So how are you meeting this devil self? How? I'm living in Nigeria and my, pre and my preoccupation every day is that I'm praying not to meet with Pelosi. She's in California or Washington DC for crying out loud. That's what we do when all our prayers is for the devil. It's about the devil. We live in two different kingdoms, people of God. I think it's time we grow up. And you have that mindset that you say God wants to announce you to the world. It doesn't announce ignorance. God does not market ignorance. I'll say that again. God never will never market ignorance. The knowledge of his son cures ignorance. Allow him to cure you of the disease called ignorance. Before he announced you. A wise person told me that I am too much. And I said it comes with the unction. That just is. Sometimes you just start talking and you get to something. And it gets to your last nerve. Right now in my spirit, you can understand. You don't know what I'm saying. That's why I'm talking the way I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Sometimes I'm speaking and I'm seeing pictures and I'm seeing people. Like I'm seeing right now. Somebody who cannot quote John 3.16. The guy is kneeling there and is asking God to announce him to the world. You think God is stupid? He will not market, he will not market ignorance. How many persons have seriously... Struggled to get a job only to be fired in the first month. So instead of them praying, making their preoccupation the job, they should have been praying for skill. They should have been working on their skill to be relevant. Because there's no way you will live without getting a job. Are you getting? 
There's no way you will go through this world without getting a job. The highest is that you become an employer of labor. Some have been frustrated. They couldn't get anybody to work with. So they started working for themselves. Praise God. So what I'm saying is that anyhow, anyhow, you will have something to do. So should your focus be about, oh, give me a job or make me relevant in whatever I do? Miss, miss priority. We miss our priorities in the place of prayers many times. And you know why? Because we don't study to pray. We pray to study. I'll say that again. We don't study to pray. We pray to study. You can never pray correctly until you have studied. Because it is the knowledge from God's word that tells you how to communicate with your father. If you have not studied this manual on how to talk with him, you just start talking out of point. And you stand, stand up from there and say you have had a nice time. You had an embarrassing moment. Glory to Jesus. Not because you had an embarrassing moment, but that's what we do in church, right? Say praise God, say hallelujah. Even sometimes when we forget we said something um, not too nice, and we say hallelujah, and everybody responds. It just flows just like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Glory to Jesus. Now, like I've said, please stop counting days. Instead, look out for the sign. Where is your light? Have you started seeing light in your feed? Have you started seeing light in your ministry? Let me tell you, everyone who got their epiphano and anagdesis knew how through light. It was Oyedipo who, more than two decades ago, stumbled into light. He came out and he said, I can never be poor. And it is true today, practically for him. So you see, you see it. <laughs> but you know how long it took before that thing showed up? Yeah. So it begins, every epiphanal and anecdotes begins with a light. No light, no arising. No arising, you are not shining forth. No glory is coming. Because the glory is not coming from outside. The glory is embedded, is embedded in the light that it gives you. Let me see how that business is going to grow when you don't have time for the Holy Spirit. When you don't have time to study the scripture. You don't understand that God's word, irrespective of the subject matter, the portion you are studying, it is generating divine wisdom inside of you. Praise God. It's generating divine wisdom inside of you every time you study God's word. We need to understand that, people of God. Let me say something. Just look at this. I was saying God will not market ignorance. Let me tell you what it is like. Let me give you a practical example. I keep seeing people, I keep seeing people just shouting and they're asking God to show them. And if, if I were to respond, I, I would have been laughing since because of what I'm saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when is the cameraman to start recording? When is behind the camera? Is it? Or when the person that he wants to record says I'm ready? No, sir. No, ma. Until the room is lit up, he doesn't start recording. You know why? Let the room be pitch dark. And I've experienced that. You are preaching and then the light goes off. Or oh, the recording continues and the people are struggling to see you. Imagine the place is pitch dark and it keeps recording. Guess what happens? You're not seeing anybody. You are hearing voice. I'm not sure you're going to watch it the second time when it's pitch dark. That is what it is when you say God should announce you. When everything is not okay. You can't even understand yourself. You don't know where you are going. You don't understand your purpose. You don't understand your destiny and you don't even know the path you should be in. And you're asking God to announce you. Let's be careful how we ask for the end point too. Our focus should be on the process. Teach us to number our days. That we may apply our heart to wisdom. To understanding. 
So light is the key. Like we said in our summary, Jesus was 12 when he experienced Epiphano until he was 30 before he experienced Anagdexis during his baptism. And the Bible said, as they dipped him, as John the Baptist baptized him, as he came out, the heavens opened. And there was a dove upon him, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Only John saw those spiritual things. But from that moment on, that was it. There was no going back. But at 12, it was made visible and it went back as it were. You cannot alter God's calendar. If you try it, you suffer for it. Luke Gospel chapter 1. This is where I want to show you how where those two words came from. Epiphano and Anaxtexis. Luke chapter 1 verse 79 and 80. The last two verses. So what is the first, the first sign? You need light. You need light from God's word. You must, it is that light for a pastor is the light from God's word that reveals even your call for you to know where you are, know your audience. For a business person, it helps you understand the business. That light guides you to books, to persons you meet with. An artisan, it leads you to, to videos, to persons, to books. The wisdom of God becomes resident in you. Please, don't be doing normal things you learn from somebody I think you'll be special. I'll say that again. You cannot be repeating what you learn from somebody exactly and think you will stand out. No, standing out means you are not standing in the queue behind anybody. You are out of the queue. That's standing out. When you learn, please, when you are applying, let something better than what you learned be seen. That's the only way you stand out. So standing out won't come from repeating exactly. You know, the light is the grace of God. It's your advantage. When you have seen how the person made it, why, why should you stop there? Why not look at it critically and see what you can add to it's no longer the person's product. You didn't copy the person. You just created yours. That's how to carve a niche for yourself. Go and check. In terms of even fashion styles, go and look at it. No one truly, very few sit down and create from scratch. It is the inspiration always comes from seeing something first. And then they saw another thing that can be made to it. Something that can be removed or something that can be added. Or both, they remove and add at the same time. And when they take it back, when Microsoft, the gate started newly, it was IBM he copied. When he came up with his own product, IBM was like, wow, this is awesome. And the gate told them, I read it, what he wrote. He said, why lead when you can copy? IBM never knew it was their product, the gate copied. When he brought it out, when he released it, IBM, they were sharing for him. This guy's brain is too much. He couldn't have done that without the foundation he got from IBM. It's creativity. That's what creativity is all about. Creativity doesn't mean starting from scratch. Creativity is the ability to see what you see and change it to another thing that people will see. Let's begin to put this things to work. Once you start hitting something like that, you know you have gotten your light. I see the beauty. Once you get your light, you know you are not far away from Epiphanos and Anagdexis. 79. To give light, Epiphano, to them that sit in darkness, that light is the Epiphano. And it means to make you visible. And in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. You see that? You see that? 
Epiphano guides you. Teach us to number our days. It guides you. That's what happens. The moment you start getting light, where you can see a product and see what comes out of that product, start rejoicing. Because you just saw now that anything you see, something new comes out of it. Glory to Jesus. Anything you see, something new comes out of it. Anything you see, something new comes out of it. That means you have become a dangerous person. You are just creating product. So you don't even need to think. Just rest. If he needs to give you a fresh idea, let him drop it. Otherwise, let him look and bring out the freshness from it. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. God looked at the earth. He looked at the sea and he saw dry land inside of it. And he said, come out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then, the dry land, he looked at it and he saw grasses and trees. He come out. It doesn't mean you have to create it. From nothing. Created from something. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is ministry work. Also too. Everybody wants to repeat and replicate. That's why one of my response. To that dear person. Was that. Don't you think that's what makes me unique? The apostle that yabs. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what makes me unique. Glory to Jesus. Verse 80, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit. Take note of that. It doesn't matter the feed you are, whether you are in the field of the ministry or you are working for somebody public or private or you are an entrepreneur, a business person. You must wax strong in the spirit. That business can grow beyond your spiritual status. Know that as a child of God. That is the advantage you will have over Dangote. Because he doesn't have the kind of spirit you possess. He's going through all kinds of things to get to where he is. You are more advantageous than him. But until you grow your spirit, you cannot grow your intuition. You cannot grow your mental faculty. You can grow that business bigger than Dangote. Because the sin nature puts a cap on our creativity and productivity. Go beyond it. You don't have limitation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Many believers in Christ, we are just wasting our talent. We are wasting our ability. We are wasting our gift. Why do I need to talk like this man of God to be relevant? That's stupidity. I've said it again. That's stupidity. Come on. The Bible talks about the knowledge of God that is inexhaustible. His wisdom is, his, his, his knowledge, his ways are past finding out. So why would you be repeating something out of something that is inexhaustible? That is the definition of stupidity. Why? Why are you doing photocopy? Copying is good, but photocopying is bad. I hope you know. Because when you photocopy, you get exactly the same thing you looked at. But when you copy, you can edit Praise God. Hallelujah. Stop photocopying and start copying. Copy and edit and release a product that will make the person you even got the idea from say, wow, this person is so intelligent. Hallelujah this morning. And the child grew and worked strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day. Did you see that somebody? Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Till the day of his showing forth. Anax Dexis. To Israel. Till the day of his showing forth. Do you think John the Baptist could have done anything to shorten that day? No. Until the day of his showing forth. Just like there was nothing Moses could have done. If at that age of 40, Moses experiences epiphany. What kept God for 40 years before he showed himself to him? Why did he show himself to him one week after? And they asked him to come back. Hello? But it was 40 years. Then the moment he came 40 years, God gave him that first 40 years. That in between 40 years, he gave it back to him. So instead of 80, it was 120. You never walk with him and lose. And the guy grew, and the child grew in spirit. Don't, he said the child, not a man. Not an adult. As a child, he said, he grew in spirit. Shame on Christian parents, fathers and mothers, who the only place their children grow is secular music. 
they grow in secular, in worldliness. That is where our children grow these days. And the child grew in spirit. Go to a Christian home. All the worldly songs they will sing then give you all the lyrics without missing it. They cannot quote any part of the Bible and tell you what it means. The child. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible didn't say an adult. It said a child. Oh, come on. Somebody say the child. The child. The child grew in spirit. So train them young. Catch them young. Groom them from childhood. The child grew in spirit. Shame on us. He grew in spirit. I was in the desert. What's desert? Desert, you don't find people. It was like he was cut off. It was like he was lonely. Until the day of his showing forth to Israel. That word day is not a day. That word day means a season. That was his season. It was the end part of his season. The anagdexis part of his season. Until the day of his showing forth. How to recognize your season? Light. Didn't you see how John came up? He worked strong in spirit. He was a preacher. He was being fed God's word. Don't be hasty to preach because you have a call. There is the call. There is the training before the reigning. There is the call. There is the training before the reigning. That's exactly how it is. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Until the day for his showing forth. Don't you know it will be a tragedy when somebody is disqualified before the inauguration? After Epiphany, I just got disqualified because the person was not ready to bring his head down. Just got dis disqualified. Reuben had that. By bet, inheritance was his. Before his inauguration, he disqualified himself. So it's not automatic. That you got to Epiphany doesn't mean you must experience anaxdexis. You better watch it. Stay glued to the Holy Spirit. Stay glued to his channel. There is no growth for us in what we do in business, entrepreneur, working for somebody, politics, without staying glued to God's word. That's where you get wisdom. What makes you stand out is going to be in that place. It's coming from your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter who you are. If you divorce the God's word, you have divorced what gives you, what, what was supposed to give you an edge in your feet. You just gave it away. Daniel was not the only president. But the Bible said, the king preferred Daniel above others. And instantly he created a position. There was now president of presidents. How do you think that Daniel got that? His fellowship with God. His fellowship with God. Your edge is the word of God. The edge of any believer. It doesn't matter your feet. It doesn't matter what you do. Your edge is God's word. So if you don't get light from God's word, you will lack the requisite wisdom you need to project yourself above others. There are no two ways about it. Praise God. Oh, the final scripture. Almost the final scripture. I've shown you light. I've told you light. You need to get light. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory. Did you see that? God does not. It's not the father of shame. Please. It's not the father of disgrace. Listen. Listen. Let's look at something. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When they say father of John, what does it mean? It means John is a son to the father, right? The father, father, John. The father of John. The father of Elizabeth is a pride because Elizabeth is what is used to identify her father. Now he says he's the father of glory. Who is the glory? You are the glory. I am the glory. Praise God. 
So he's not the father of shame. So our life cannot be shameful. Praise God. Hallelujah. My life can never be shameful. Amen. My life is a life of glory. That's why the Bible says the path of the justice as the shining light, it shines brighter and brighter. Like the sun until it hits its noonday strength. The father of glory. He is my father because my name is glory. Mm. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, in this church, I've told us of on the spot unction. The father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Did you see that? Don't forget 15 and 16 talk about the prayer Paul prayed, right? This is the prayer. May give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom. Because your house, your car, your business fortune, your promotion in your place of work, your marriage, your fruitfulness, your wealth, your prosperity is locked inside that wisdom. What is wisdom? Knowing what to do. Knowing what to do. That's what distinguishes us. We're all in the same situation. Knowing what to do is what distinguishes. Do you know how many persons are starved during this COVID-19 in, in this country? News won't carry it. They just died. Go to China, a whole family, a whole family wiped out. Families wiped out. Yet for some of us, this is when we are even giving out to people. Praise God. Hallelujah. A time when people are keeping to themselves because they don't know how long it will go. This is because it is in darkness, light is appreciated. Come on. It is in darkness, light is appreciated. Let's not be scared when we are confronted with problems. Let's see our opportunity in every problem that knocks on our door. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him. That word revelation is a pignosis. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. The word knowledge there is a pignosis. I beg your pardon. The word revelation there is the Greek word for apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. It means a disclosure, a revelation. To reveal something that was close, a mystery. Our prosperity, our greatness in business, in politics, it's a mystery. When light and wisdom comes, it is revealed to you how to attain it. In the knowledge of him, epignosis, the precise and correct knowledge. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Can you see that for Tiso? Arise, shine, for that light is come. Remember I told you I will show you in the New Testament? Yeah, the, this is it. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Illumination, for Tiso, light, that ye may know. Can you see that? Not that you may become. Until you know you can become. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before you become, you must know. Every man becomes what they know. So when you know nothing, you become nothing. Praise God. Hallelujah. The reason you are going to attain your greatness is because you know your greatness. So let's stick with God's word. Let's activate our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's why if you think you are helping somebody, you don't help the pastor by coming to church. You help yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you don't come, it's yourself you are punishing. Praise Jesus. Hmm. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened for teaser, light, illumination, that ye may know what is the hope of, your, of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance. And they say, please, this is not a portion for ministers. It's a portion for everybody, not for ministers only. That you may know what is the hope of your calling. You are called a business person. You are called into business. You are called an entrepreneur. You are called to work for somebody. You are called to be a support in the church, in the work of the vineyard. You need to know what is the hope of your calling. What is in need for you? You see, God is a straightforward person. He shows you the picture. It's not doing you like, 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 like Nigerian government who shifts the goalposts once the game has already started. No. He said, listen, I've called you into business. You need to know what I have planned for you. The end. You need to see it. That's what we are looking at. How to recognize your season. What is that hope? What is it? The hope of your calling. This is your calling. What is the hope? And what is the inheritance you have in me? What do I have for you? Praise God. Hallelujah. What's your hope? What's your inheritance? What's your hope? What's your inheritance? So in Christ Jesus, we have hope. We have inheritance. We have hope. We have inheritance. Why not focus on that? So why will I see myself as not having anything? No, no, no. I have inheritance. Glory to Jesus. He didn't talk about the inheritance your parents left for you because God is, God is not concerned about that. He said, I have inheritance for you. Praise God. 
the hope and inheritance. We are not hopeless because we are not helpless. Praise God. We are hopeful because we are helpful. Praise Jesus. Like I said, until you receive the light, you cannot become the light. That inheritance is in the saints. Did you see that? So if you cannot see yourself as a saint, bye-bye to the inheritance. So you see that our mind, our mindset, our mentality is key to what we will inherit, what we will experience in Christ Jesus. This inheritance is only for saints. So if you cannot see yourself as a saint, you keep seeing yourself as a sinner, bye-bye to the inheritance. Maybe I'll spend time if the Holy Spirit will on that. You cannot inherit what is reserved for the saints when you call yourself a sinner, when you see yourself a sinner. That's stupidity in its altitude. It's, it's difficult to stop it happening. You want to get the inheritance. And you say all of us are sinners. Are you dumb? He has clearly stated this is for saints. You don't believe you are a saint in Christ Jesus. But you want to get the inheritance. Are you a thief? Now somebody says someone had come to steal, to kill and destroy. <laughs> Only the thief does that. Only the thief does that. FFK said Buhari has come to steal, to kill and destroy. Because it's in came on board five years running. It is lamentation and woes everywhere. When the righteous is in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it through, they mourn. You can't beat the wisdom of God. There are not two ways about it. Yet you have Christians who are following. Why wouldn't they follow? Because they don't know the scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are looking for their daily bread when God has left inheritance for them. Mm -hmm. We are looking for daily bread when we have inheritance. You see our mindset needs to change. When Jesus prayed that prayer, he prayed it before he went to the cross, right? Because the new covenant has not been established. Did you hear him pray that prayer after? No way. We don't look for daily bread. We have inheritance. Look, requesting for daily bread means you are not sure of your tomorrow. You don't have hope. But the Bible says we have hope. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fired up in my spirit, the things are pouring out. Why would you be looking for daily bread when you have inheritance? The man who looks for daily bread is a hustler. You can't be a believer in Christ and be a hustler. Your inheritance is settled. You are settled. Praise God. I am settled in Christ Jesus. I have inheritance. I don't look for daily bread. Glory to Jesus. It is either you believe him and experience what he has for you or continue to doubt him and continue to look for daily bread. Become a hustler. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am not a hustler. I have inheritance in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That means I'm not looking for daily bread. I don't look for daily bread. I have inheritance. You know the portion of inheritance you get is commensurate to the man you are inheriting from. <laughs> oh, glory to you. Oh, God. How to recognize your season. <laughs> I know my season is here. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I'm a preacher. And the insight, the fortizo is just awesome. The size of your inheritance is commensurate to the person you are inheriting from. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Oh, I feel like running this morning. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all they that dwell therein. I have unlimited inheritance in Christ Jesus. Unlimited inheritance. That is the reason why. My wealth will be so great, you can quantify it. Praise God. Because I take his word literally. Some of you are too psychedelic to believe what God has said. And in, this, in the New Testament, you believe to become. You believe to receive. You think you are being nice. You are being stupid. You are the devil bedeviling your own self. You think you are being religiously pious. Not to embrace what he said he has given to you. Oh God, what is your problem? Brother, what is your problem? This man said, take. And he said, no. <laughs> I can't take everything. If I were the Almighty, you take nothing. Praise God. <laughs> you, you take nothing. The 
Great is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Is somebody excited this morning? Yes, sir. I have inheritance. I don't look for daily bread. And you know how big your inheritance is? That's what I just quoted. Mm. Isaiah 60 said, Kings shall come to the brightness of their rising. The Gentiles will come to their light. And kings to the brightness of their rising. That means you command political power, political honor. You attract them. It doesn't matter where you are. You think that, I don't think about Nigeria. I don't think about United States. I think globally. Because that's my inheritance. That is my sphere. That is why anywhere I land, if it is US, if it is UK, if it is Europe, I take charge. And I tell the people I meet, shut up and sit down. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, don't in, you can't intimidate this apostle because I know whose I am. And I know who I am. And I know that that very same land where you think is yours is more mine than it is yours. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus. I... The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He didn't say the earth is for Obama. He didn't say the earth is for Trump. No, he said it's the Lord. And I'm the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. How to recognize your season. You see what is happening to your pastor? You don't need a soothsayer to tell you he's in his season. As a minister of the gospel, you can get to your own season as a business person, as an artisan, when you begin to see creativity and dexterity coming out through you. It doesn't mean that's the moment you see money bust out, but you already know. The moment you hit that button, you are full of hope. You are full of excitement because you know your inheritance is closer. Praise God. The inheritance is there, but it takes light to draw it. Your inheritance is there. It takes light to draw it. Your inheritance is like a bank account. You need your assets. You need your PIN number. As we do these days. You need your PIN number. Or your account. To withdraw it. Praise God. Amen. Let's wrap up. We've been talking for more than one hour now. That's the reason we didn't do video recording. Hmm. You know, one of the beauty of light is that it reveals your purpose and your path. And I'll show you one last scripture. I've told us before, while we started, that your announcement doesn't necessarily have to be on a global scale. It can be community, it can be county, your local government, your state. You are still as relevant as the one with a global announcement. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you somebody who had an announcement in a community level. She wasn't a pastor. So that's why I said, disabuse your mind. It's not only pastors that get that announcement. Her name was Dockers. She was a fashion designer. She was a fashion designer. And I'm going to say something very strong. I said it prophetically a while ago. Some came and left. It's like they never came. Some came and left. It's like they never left. Your epignos, your epif epiphanos, and your anadexis, your impact does not end in death. For a believer, the impact doesn't end in death. In fact, I will show you people who got promoted from community to global after they left. Dockers is one of them. Did I know Dockers before? Now I know Dockers. Praise God. Hallelujah. She grew from community level to global. You can't read the Bible and not, and not know Dockers. She's on a global scale. Are you getting what I'm saying? Dockers was an entrepreneur, a fashion designer. She got her epiphanous. And are anadexes even after, after death. They brought Peter. They said, come and see her designs. You think her designs were common? And, and they brought Peter? No. It wasn't just that she made philanthropic work. And the Bible never said he made it free for them. Don't forget to. The Bible didn't specifically mention that. But she touched lives. She made philanthropic donations, but she touched lives. 
If, if it was free and it was stupid, they would not brag about it. Dockers. You know when I say fashion is in this? I said that to somebody some years back. Somebody shine with that fashion business. You, you know it is, when somebody has passed on, people say, mm, wait till you they so safe. But they praised it. Praise God. Say, mm, we just manage them. They praised it. That means Dokas was excellent. She was a fashion designer. Zacchaeus was a public servant. He got his, his, his announcement. I'm showing you different feet, different areas for you to understand that it's not only pastors that are titled to Epiphanius and Anadexis. I started with an entrepreneur, then with a public servant, then with a businessman, Edda Gales, third John chapter 3. A business mogu and a philanthropist. We hear of him today. What of just regularly ordinary day church members that are not even young, that are old? Somebody that is even a widow. This woman had lived all her life. Her husband had died. She's now old. She didn't miss her announcement. Huh? The poor widow woman who gave all that she had that Jesus mentioned. She got her announcement that day. Praise God. Why would I have thought her since finished, Abby? When she was young, she wasn't shown. When she got married, she wasn't shown. When she had her kids, she wasn't shown. Her husband died. She's already old. She got her announcement. Do you know what that tells you? Don't get bothered. God will forget you. Praise God. Hallelujah. If he didn't forget that widow, a widow, she's, she's gone. People had written her off. She got her moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when I started, I said, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a believer, you have your day. We all have our day. Praise God. Among the women that ministered to Jesus, one of them had something to do with the king, the Herod family, working for them. That is somebody, that's a political steward. Got an announcement also too. Are you seeing all the areas that I've covered? Oh, somebody think, some think they need to be married as, as a single sister before life is meaningful to them. Mary and Martha wasn't. They got the announcement. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you seeing how I've taken that time to run through scriptures? To give it different, virtually every sphere of life? So it's not only for pastors. It's not only for preachers. If you are in Christ Jesus and you do what is expected of you, you will. Let me show you the sign. The sign you need to watch out for. Jeremiah chapter 20 and we'll close with this. We have taken enough time. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Listen on. This is a preacher saying, I'm done with you. But his word oh, was in my heart. As a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. You know what that is? Divine passion. Divine passion. How you know you are on the right path or you have identified your path is divine passion. When you try to walk away from it, it brings you back. You can physically walk away from it, but your heart is still there. And every time you find yourself in front of it, something is triggered. Some of you, you are in the wrong path. You are, you are running a part time. You have not entered your path. So you better find out the one that, is, that you have stronger passion for. And the earlier, the better. Praise God. Amen. Because sometimes you, you just, you are doing something to hold on. Mm? Like internship. Just meanwhile. So find out that thing that you have so much divine passion for that gives you the greatest excitement when you see it, when you are asked to do it, when you are face to face with it. That is a short path to your path, to your destiny. Look for it. Divine passion is what you look at the right path. Until you get this, forget Epiphano 
and anadexis if you are on the wrong path. This is wisdom nugget. You will get no reward for walking in another man's path. You get no reward. The reward goes to the person that's on that path. So let's not labor in vain. Let's not waste our time. Let your divine passion direct you. I'm a man with many paths, so many things. But I know my divine path. The one that leads all of them is this ministry work. That doesn't mean you don't diversify, but you know the one that you should major on. Because all of them is to help that single one. Praise God. How to recognize your season. I hope we have been blessed this morning. I believe we have been blessed. Because we have gone very deep. That's the reason why I didn't make it video. Because it would take too long. Take time. Study this world. Your life will never be the same. You are not at the realm of daily bread. You have an inheritance. Let's stay with our inheritance. Let's rise up on our feet.